Good day. I'm going to uh, tackle another part of uh, building construction under theory of uh, structures. So center of gravity, the point at which uh, the entire weight of the body may be considered concentrated so that if uh, supported at this point, the body would remain in equilibrium in any position coincident with the center of a mass is a uniform gravitational field. A force whose line of action passes through the center of gravity of a body affects only its transitional equilibrium. The body remains in rotational equilibrium. So what is center of mass? The point at which the entire mass of a body may be considered concentrated so that the moment about any line through the point is zero. Centroid, the point in plane area that corresponds to the center of gravity of a very plate at the same area and shape. The center of uh, a one or two dimensional figures about which the sum of the displacements of all points in the figure is zero. For any body, there is a point at which the body may be supported in any position with no tendency to turn. This is called the center of gravity of the body. By considering the point where the body may be held so that the body will hang balance. One can see by inspection that the center of gravity, example of letter E, a straight line segment, is at its midpoint. A rectangle is at the intersection of its diagonals. A triangle is at the intersection of its medians. A circle is at its center. Theorem of Papus. First theorem, the area of any surface generated by the revolution of a plane curve about an external axis in its plane is equal. Second theorem, the volume of any solid generated by the revolution of a plane area about an external axis in its plane is equal to the product of the area of the generating figure and the distance its center of gravity moves. An axis in the same plane with a plane area is external to the area if no two points of the area are no opposite sides of the axis. Historical notes. This theorem was first uh, discovered by Papus of uh, Alexandria in the 3rd century of the uh, Christian era. About his work was forgotten until the uh, 16th century when Kepler and Guldin revived interest in the subject. Kepler succeeded in finding rules for computing volumes of a number of solids generated by the revolution of a plane figure. All his rules were special cases of uh, Papus theorem. However, Kepler never announced the theorem in its uh, general form. Among the uh, solids treated by Kepler were the torus and two solids which he termed the apple and the lemon. The apple is the solid which he formed by revolving a segment of a uh, circle greater than a uh, semicircle. About its chord as an axis, the lemon 
is the uh, solid which is formed by revolving a segment of a circle less than a uh, semicircle about its chord as an axis. Importance of uh, centroid. The location of the centroid of an area will find its application in the study of strength of materials. The position of the centroid is important in determining the location of neutral axis in the bending of beams or in strength of materials. The neutral axis line of zero stress passes through the centroid of the cross section of the beam. Equally important as the centroid is the moment of an area. The uh, moment of an area with respect to an axis is the product of the area multiplied by the perpendicular distance from its centroid to the axis. In strength of materials, this is used to determine shearing stress and deflection of beams. Let us consider here the application of centroid. Here is a sample problem named as number one. So here, a rectangular building have, having a floor area of 12 meters by 24 meters. The depth of the building, as you could see in our drawing, is 12 meters and having a length of 24 meters. Solve for the centroid. So take note that this is a rectangular building having a width of 12 meters by 24 meters. So we need to determine here where is the exact point of the centroid for a rectangular mass or structure. So take note, if we're going to divide 12 meters by 2, it is equivalent to 6 meters, which corresponds to mean of y is 6 meters. Now the length is 24 meters. If you're going to divide it by 2, it is 12 meters. Now the mean of x is therefore 12 meters. That is why here x and y is 12 and 6 meters. So meaning this is already the exact coordinate for the center of the gravity of the building. Now, let us go over the uh, solution. So, for sample problem number one, using the longhand solution to solve for mean of x and mean of y, step one, solve the perimeter of the building. So, we need to get the total length of the building. So here we have the perimeter, which is the perimeter of a rectangle is equivalent to 12 meters plus 12 meters plus 24 meters plus 24 meters equals to 72 meters. Or simply we could use the perimeter of a rectangle, which is equivalent to 2 length plus 2 width. So same case. We are able to solve for the perimeter of a rectangular building, which is equivalent to 72 meters. This is the total length of the building. For step two, we need to uh, solve for the uh, mean of uh, x. Mean of x, just get here, 72 meters. This will serve as the divisor. Now, if we're going to look at how we're able to establish 12 times 0, this, this one has something to do with the coordinate. So meaning, because this one is 12 meter, and the moment arm, which is actually at the origin of or the intersection of x and y axis, that is why it became 0. So here, there is no moment arm, but instead it became zero. And 24 meters, 
is actually the length of the rectangle times 12 meter. So as you could see here, this is 24 meters long. And then the moment arm is 12 meters from the center of the uh, mass till this point is 12 meters. And that's why we were able to obtain here 24 times 12 meters. While 12 meters is actually the width and the moment arm is 24 meters. So meaning here, this is 12 meters and the moment arm till it reaches the origin is 24 meters. That is why we were able to attain this value. Now, 24 meters is actually the length of the uh, rectangular mass or building and its moment arm is 12 meters. That is why here, as you could see, this is once again the length of the rectangular mass is 24 meters and then from the center of the gravity of the building till the point of origin is 12 meters. So therefore, the uh, mean of x is equivalent to 12 meters. While for step 3, you need to solve for mean of y. So take note, mean of y, the total length of the rectangular mass or building is 72 meters. So take note that 12 meters meters is actually the width of the structure then the height is actually six meters so if you're going to look at the span of this rectangular building this is 12 meters till the point of origin is actually six meters this is how we were able to attain this value under step 3. While 24 meters is actually the uh, width or the uh, length of the uh, rectangular building and the moment arm is 12 meters. So here the length of the um, structure is actually 24 meters and then the arm or the distance from the center till it reaches this point of origin is 12 meters. Now, the width is actually 12 meters, or we can even consider this one as the span. And the center of the width is 6 meters. So we are actually discussing this side, which is actually 12 meters depth. Then at the center of it, it is 6 meters. That is why we were able to attain that value. Now, 24 meters, because it falls under the uh, axis of x. That is why there is no distance, but instead it is 0. So we are actually referring to this base. This one is 24 meters because there's no moment arm here. That is why it is considered to be zero. So therefore, the mean of y is equivalent to 6 meters. So using here formula for the centroid of a rectangle to compute for mean of x and mean of y. So x equals to 1 up its length. So therefore, 1 up of 24 meters is the mean of x is equivalent to 12 meters. While for the mean of y under step 2, same case, you need to divide it. So divide the depth by one half, so one half of 12 meters 
is equivalent to 6 meters. So this justifies our solution. So another problem that is discussed here, the uh, centroid of a um, trapezoid uh, building. So here, a trapezoid building. This is sample problem number two. Having varying floor area, it uh, comprises of a uh, right triangle and a rectangle. When uh, connected, the uh, triangular height of a building is 6 meters. Having uh, a length of uh, 12 meters and the uh, rectangular shape of the building having a depth of 6 meters and the length is 12 meters. Take note, the building is uh, trapezoidal shape and the longer depth is 12 meters. And the other side has a depth of 6 meters and the length of the building is 12 meters long. So you need to solve for the centroid. So here, the um, longer side of the trapezoid is 12 meters, while the shorter side of the trapezoid as seen in this uh, elevation or, or plan is 6 meters. So it comprises of one right triangle and one rectangle. So meaning you can devise here the formula for a right triangle using its uh, centroid formula and the uh, centroid of a rectangular mass. So meaning mean of x is 5.33 and mean of y is equivalent to 4.6. So this is another way of analyzing the trapezoidal shape. So here, we need to solve for the trapezoidal building using the uh, triangular side of the trapezoidal mass. For example, problem number two, using the longhand solution to solve for mean of uh, x and mean of y. Step one, solve for the area of the triangular side of the trapezoidal building area of the right triangle area of the triangle is equivalent to one half depth times length which is equivalent to one half of six meters times 12 meters so area of the triangle is equivalent to 36 square meters for step two solve for the area of the uh, rectangular side of the trapezoidal building area of the rectangle is equivalent to 6 meters times 12 meters so therefore the area of the rectangle is equivalent to 72 square meters for step 3 to solve for mean of uh, x so we have here the formula mean of x is equivalent to the uh, summation of mean of x and the area divided by the summation of the area so therefore we need to add the area of the uh, triangle and the area of the rectangle which is equivalent to 36 square meter plus 72 square meter then after which so take note that 36 uh, square meter is after the, the area of a triangle having a moment arm of 4 meters. So here, as you could see, this is the area of the triangle, which is 36 square meters. And with respect to the X and Y, coordinate so this is the point of origin so take note 
36 square meter and then the moment arm is equivalent to 4 meters. This is how we were able to attain this value. Now, for the area of the uh, rectangle, so take note, it is 72 square meters having a distance of 6 meters. So here, this is actually the area of the uh, rectangle of the uh, trapezoidal uh, mass having a distance from the intersection of x and y axis. It has a distance of 6 meters. So therefore, the uh, value here under step 3, you were able to attain here the mean of x is equivalent to 5.33 meters. Under step 4, so for mean of y, take once again the total summation of uh, the mean of y times the area, then the area of the uh, trapezoidal mass. So take note, the total area of the uh, trapezoidal mass, 36 square meter is the right triangle area, and the rectangular part of the trapezoidal building is 72 square meters. So therefore, 36 square meter having a distance or a, or a moment arm of 8 meters. So let us take a look at 8 meters, how we're able to determine its distance. So take note, here under the y coordinate and x coordinate, the span of uh, the right uh, triangle or the triangular area from its uh, centroid to the coordinate is equivalent to 8 meters. So add 3 meters plus 3 meters plus 2 meters. That is why we were able to attain 8 meters distance. Now, for the area of the rectangle, which is actually equivalent to 72 square meter, having a moment arm or distance of 3 meters. So, in this figure, you could see that the rectangular mass, this is the rectangular mass of the trapezoidal building. So here, take note that this is the center of the rectangular mass having a distance of 3 meters from y axis. So therefore, we have 72 square meter and the moment arm is equivalent to 3 meters. So, mean of y is equivalent to 4.67 meters. So, this is how we were able to solve the problem using the uh, formula for a right triangular mass and a rectangular mass for the trapezoidal building. So, that is the long cut solution. Another way of solving the formula is to use directly the formula of the trapezoidal mass. So here, this is the formula for the centroid of a trapezoid. So mean of x is equivalent to L divided by 3 equals 2. So multiply it times HA plus 2 HB divided by HA plus HB. So therefore, 
length is 12 meters divided by 3. So here, let us look, take a look at that side. So take note that the longer side here is h of a, which is equivalent to 12 meters divided by 3. Then multiply it times 12 meters plus 2. Where did we get the value of uh, 6 meters? This is actually the shorter side of the trapezoidal mass. So this is equivalent to 6 meters. So therefore, we were able to come up with same value as the first solution. Mean of x is equivalent to 5.33 meters. Another topic, which is the inflection point. In a beam, there are two points where curvature do not exist and uh, therefore no bending stresses are developed. These two points are called points of inflection. This is why steel bars in reinforced concrete beams are set near the top of its support. This is the negative bending moments and near the uh, bottom of the middle portion of the beam span we have the positive bending moment. Inflection point is a point in the uh, moment diagram where it changes from positive to negative moment or vice versa. And the volume of the uh, moment at this point is zero. This is the point in the moment diagrams at which curvature reverses as it changes from concave to convex. Let us cite here an example. So here, the inflection point, a beam having uh, 15 meters long. So you need to determine the location of the inflection point. So I would like you to see the figure below. Now here, as we previously what we have discussed before, so this is actually a, uh, a simply supported beam. We have already eliminated the cantilever beam on our previous discussion just to simplify the problem. So it means that there are actually two struts or column that supports the beam. So the beam having a length of 15 meters. So take note, we are interested uh, in solving the uh, length of the uh, inflection point. So take note, the inflection point here is actually the point where it is at neutral axis. So meaning it is found at zero, zero. So here, meaning zero, zero is actually the origin. Now, take note that the inflection point is a point in the moment diagram where it changes from positive to negative. So ev everything that is found on top is considered to be positive moment and below the neutral axis is considered to be the negative moment. So meaning this is the negative moment. That's why if you're going to recall the the uh, definition of inflection point, a point in the moment diagram where it changes from positive to negative moment or vice versa. And the volume of moment at this point is zero because it is found at the neutral axis. This is the point in the moment diagrams at which the curvature 
reverses and it changes from concave to convex. So this is the visual solution for the inflection point. So what we are interested here is to see how we are able to correlate the elevation or section of the beam showing its cut bars. So here, this is actually some meaning. If you're going to look at the span of the uh, maximum moment, it is found midway, 15 meters long. That's why we have a span which is equivalent to L divided by 2 which is equivalent to 7.5 meters under the shear diagram. Now, let us consider here how to solve the solution. So, take note. We have represented the inflection point as the distance of x of 1. Now, if we're going to put here the cross section, we name it section A dash A. And then the uh, second location of the inflection point, which is from the origin up to this point, we have x of 2. Now, V1 is considered to be your reaction or shears of 1, and M1 is considered to be your moment arm of 1. So this is under clockwise position. Then this is under counterclockwise position, which is your moment of 2. How we were able to solve for x of 1, which is equivalent to 1.15, and x of 2 is equivalent to 13.84, we will be showing here the quadratic equation. So, first, we need to solve the summation moment at L is equivalent to zero. Clockwise direction is presumed to be positive and counterclockwise direction is presumed to be negative. So V of one equals to X and minus the weight of the beam times the span X, then you need to divide one half times x, which is actually the moment arm, minus moment of 1 plus moment of x is equivalent to 0. We are actually referring to this equation. So meaning, if we're going to get w, so this is already w as the cross-section of your inflection point. Then the span here, x of 1. That is why if we're going to get the center of this, x of 1 divided by 2. So here, that is already the moment equation or the moment arm, which is equivalent to 1 half of x. So take note, w is the entire weight or, or load for this cross-section then x of 1 or simply x. That is why here we have w, x, 1 half of x equals to moment of 1. Negative arm, which is actually this one, which is moment of 1. It is considered to be positive and here we name this one as moment of x. That is why here you could see that our sign convention, negative x, is presumed to be in uh, a counterclockwise direction. So therefore, m of x, if you're going to transpose it, becomes negative. So retain v1 times x minus w x, one of minus m sub 1. So this will serve as our working equation. So the quadratic formula, ax squared plus bx plus c plus 2, 0. 
this is the first quadratic equation. Then the second quadratic equation is negative b plus minus b squared minus 4ac times a times 2. Moment at x is 0 because it is located in the uh, neutral axis, abbreviated as NA, to solve for the inflection point. So here, negative mx equals to 0. So therefore, this becomes 0 already. So 0 equals to v sub 1, x, w, x, minus 1 half times x. So here, therefore, we need to uh, put here the values intended. So v sub 1 is known to be our shear sub 1, which is 22.5 kilonewton times x. So meaning here, your shear sub 1 is 22.5 kilonewton. That is V sub 1. Then, because the total load of your beam, W, is 3 kilonewton, meaning the entirety of this beam is 3 kilonewton meter. That is why here we have designated here a value of 3 kilonewton meter times x. Then you need to determine here the mid span of this beam. That is why here we have uh, x is 15 meters. So 3 kilonewton meter times 15 is 45. Then Half of 50 meters is 7.5 meter. So therefore, we have 1.5 kilonewton meter times x squared minus 24 kilonewton meter, which is actually m sub 1. So here, M sub 1 is equivalent to 24 kilonewton meter. So using the quadratic uh, equation, so we need to uh, simplify this. So here, 24 kilonewton minus then we just transpose this, we put it in front, so it becomes 1.5 negative x squared plus 22.5x. So here, A is negative 1.5, B is 22.5, and C is negative 24. So the quadratic uh, formula ax squared plus bx plus c equals to 0, x equals to negative b plus minus b squared minus 4 ac a times 2. So we just input here the formulas, so take note. We have here negative, that's why in the formula we still retain negative despite that b is positive 22.5. And then sign convention plus and minus b squared, so b is 22.5 squared minus 4, a is negative 1.5, c is 24. Then a is negative 1.5 times 2. So therefore, x is equivalent to, so if x is positive, x of 1 therefore is 1.15 meters.
So this is how we were able to solve for x of 1 is equivalent to 1.15 meters. If x is positive. If x is negative, so take note here, if x is negative, simply we use the uh, quadratic formula. So we have negative 22.5 minus 19.0328 divided by negative 3. So x of 2 is equivalent to 13.84 meters. So therefore, we're able to solve the other distance of the inflection point, which is 13.84 meters. So this is the designated location for your cut bars. Now, if you're going to add, of course, 13.84 plus 1.56 is equivalent to 15 meters. Now, to check if our answer would uh, come up with 15 meters, all we need to do is just add up the total length. So, therefore, to determine the overall length of the beam in relation to the length of the inflection point, the overall length of the beam is 15 meters. So, 15 meters is equivalent to 13.84 plus 1.57 is equivalent to 15 meters. So this already justifies our solution. As you can see here, take note that if x is positive, we have a distance of 1.15 meters. If x is negative, we have a distance of 13.84 meters. So therefore, we just get here the value of 1.15. So if you're going to add it to 13.84 meters, it is equivalent to 15 meters span, which is actually the entirety of the, uh, the beam. The simply supported beam. So, another topic is the uh, importance of pre cumbering the uh, beam. So, the formation is the change in shape of any material when subjected to the action of a force. So, cumber is a slight convex curvature intentionally built into a beam girder or truss to compensate for an anticipated deflection. Creep is a phenomenon whereby a solid material under constant load gradually deforms, which uh, result in a gradual increase in deflection over time. It is the downward curvature of a beam when subjected to load Creep is the term given to the tendency for concrete to continue to strain over a period of time when the stress is constant. Deflection is the perpendicular distance a spanning member deviates from a true course under transverse loading, increasing with load and span. The uh, decreasing with an increase in the uh, moment of inertia of the section or the modulus of elasticity of the material. And precumbering beams can be fabricated with an upward curve that offsets some of the dead load deflection. Beams are often prepared in the opposite direction to uh, the uh, deflection in order to cancel out 
the majority of the dead load deflection, reducing the uh, overall perceived critical deflection. So what is dumping mechanism? Dumping mechanism, any of various visco elastic devices typically installed at structural joints to absorb the energy generated by wind or earthquake force progressively diminished or eliminate vibratory or oscillatory motion and prevent destructive resonance from occurring. So example is the tuned mass dumper, a heavy mass mounted on the roller and attached to the upper portion of a tall building with spring dumping mechanism having an inertial tendency to remain at rest and thus counteracting and dissipating any building movements. Base isolation, isolating the base of a building from the ground with dumping mechanism to allow the superstructure to float as a rigid body and alter the natural period of vibration of the structure so that it is different from that of the ground, thus preventing destructive resonances from occurring. Aerodynamic dumping, the shaping of a tall building to create turbulence which generates crosswind lift to oppose crosswind deflection during high winds. Turbulence has an irregular motion of the atmosphere characterized by up and down currents. Preventing uh, resonance oscillation. The simplest way of preventing resonance oscillation is by reinforcing the structure so that it will become stiffer. The stiffer the structure, the shorter the period of oscillation. Another way of preventing resonance oscillation is by using mechanical gadget similar to those used in cars and planes as stabilizers. This is called tuned dynamic damper, which is made of a heavy mass of concrete attached to the top of the building by means of lateral spring. When the building oscillates, the heavy spring mass oscillates too, but in the opposite direction. This counter action completely damp out the oscillation of the building. The dampers resonant oscillate do not increase due to the uh, control exerted by the large shock absorbers springs for tall and similar structures. Heavy metal rings connect to the top by radial springs are used to avoid lateral swings. So under the structural code of the Philippines, critical damping is the least value of the damping coefficient for which a dynamic system will not oscillate when uh, distributed initially but will simply return to the equilibrium position. The vicious dumping coefficient is expressed as a fraction of this critical dumping. So critical dumping occurs when the ratio of the coefficient to the critical dumping is 1. Earthquake Earthquake, focus of uh, hypocenter, so the point of fracture within the Earth's interior where an initial slip occurs, triggering a large-scale slippage, sometimes extending over hundreds of kilometers called earthquake. Tsunami, when the seafloor is uh, raised suddenly, during the earthquake, water is raised up with its 
C, surface is tip. Water rushes away if the floor is dropped. Then water rushes away if the floor is dropped. An enormous mass of water is suddenly set in motion. And the complex uh, splashing back and forth continues for hours. The result is a train of water waves known as tsunami. Earthquake load. Earthquake is the most threatening force that uh, is occurring since prehistoric time up to the present. No instrument has been developed to accurately predict its occurrence and intensity. When an earthquake occurs, the Earth's crust floats over a core of molten magma or rock that has been smashed into several big chunks called tectonic plates. They tend to move slipping and sliding laterally on each other, but these jug tectonic plates do not slide past each other smoothly. The, the movement produces the accumulated stresses in the crust that cause the uh, jerking action of structures along the fault line. This dynamic force is mostly horizontal and can be resisted by the same kind of bracing used against the wind. So the magnitude of strength produced by an earthquake is measured on a richer scale, an earthquake having the strength of 3 to 5 on the scale may cause little damage to well-built buildings, but strength of 7 and above may cause buildings to collapse. Countries lying along fault lines are prone to earthquake, such as the Mediterranean, Asia Minor, the Himalayas and the East Indies and countries along the Pacific. So every building over 14 stories in height is recommended to be provided with no less than three approved recording accelerographs, which shall be located in the basement, mid portion, and near the top of the building. Accelerograph is an instrument which measures the velocity and acceleration of the earthquake in the ground. Just big joint, a joint that uh, physically uh, separates two adjacent buildings, masses, so that free vibratory movement in each can occur independently of the other. Regulating devices that can be installed on the ground to reduce forces transmitted to structures because of the earthquake. For rocky foundation beds, a layer of mono granular sand can reduce the transmitted forces. Rollers attached to the base of the structure and uh, regulating devices permit energy to dissipate when it reaches certain intensity. Structures built of masonry walls are characterized by high degree of rigidity and therefore by a very low period swing from extreme right to extreme left and back. This makes the structure sensitive to seismic forces. One solution to counteract this force is to reduce the application of horizontal force depending on the degree of seismicity of the zone. Python, a um, watertight cylindrical or rectangular chamber used in underwater construction to protect workers from water pressure and soil collapse. Preparing the foundation bed, the work crew had to descend their airlock and dig 
the clamshell buckets raised and uh, mock through a water filled shop. Compressed air kept water from flooding in. This foundation is a special type of pier consisting of hollow shell that is sunk to position to form a major part of the structure. The uh, three principal types of are the box, which is the open at the top and close at the bottom, and the pneumatic, which is close at the top and opens at the bottom. This foundation is called Kaizen. Special types of foundation. We have the floating Kaizen. This foundation is most suited for highly compressible soils such as those which are muddy or clayish in character, often used in maritime construction. A real Kaizen is constructed on site, opened on top for filling stones or concrete materials. It is considered the most difficult type of foundation to build due to lowering and proper positioning on the foundation bed. Pluricellular Kaizen is the foundation adapted for compressible soil constructed on site. It is opened both at the top and bottom and divided internally into many squared cells of uh, reinforced concrete. It lower borders or feet have uh, sharp icons for sinking which will be uh, facilitated by their own weight. Upon reaching the desired depth, the cells are then filled with sand. At the top, a uh, covered flooring is constructed on which the entire structure in uh, elevation is built. Let us discuss slabs, one way slab or pertaining to a structure or structural member having a load carrying mechanism that acts in one direction only. When the ratio of the short span to the long span of a slab is less than 0.50, slab is considered to be one way. Or simply if you're going to look at the one way slab, it means that it is rectangular shape. For a two-way slab pertaining to a structure or structural member having a load carrying mechanism that acts in two or more directions, when the ratio of short span to the long span, if you're going to divide it, is equivalent. So the ratio becomes 0.50. It is considered to be two-way slab. Or in short, if you're going to look at the area of a two-way slab, the shape is square or nearly perfect square. Number three, flat slab is a type of concrete floor which has no beam. And number four, lip slab construction is a technique of constructing multi-story buildings in which all horizontal slabs are cast at ground level and when curved are raised into position by means of a hydraulic jack. Post tensioning and pro tensioning precast or pre stress concrete is a method of building concrete construction in which floor and roof slabs are cast usually at the ground level then raised into its position by jacking. While for full pre-stressing, the method of uh, mechanical pre-stressing is thereby concrete is cast around the uh, pre-stressing tendons, which have been previously tensioned against external abutment. When the tendons, which had been released from these external restraints, they are contact elasticity and force the hardened concrete which is bonded firmly to the steel into compression. 
Kiwi. Kiwi is a longitudinal group or channel formed in a concrete footing or other members that has set, providing a shear resisting key for a newly placed concrete. This ends 2.1.